Coming up in today's program. Songs of nostalgia from Portugal. Art on the streets of Chicago. Drawing keeps my sanity. And learning the alphabet, Colombian style. But first, Artworld travels to Kenya to get an insider's perspective on the country's art scene. Hello and welcome to Arts World. My name is Tim Jiru from Nairobi, Kenya. One of the most interesting things about this beautiful city that I live, work and play are the matatus or the taxis. They are an integral part of our culture. Let's take a ride. <laughs> Kenyan culture, they've been here since, I think, time in memorial. It's a van, uh, like, that carries between 25 to, like, 29 people. We are the only country that got uh, matatus with graffiti design, public transport cars that are actually designed. It's something we take pride of. As in, if you walk around, you see something beautiful on the streets. The name matatu is a Swahili word that means three. The first time they were introduced, it was 30 cents. So it was called matatu. They are very entertaining. People really invest in matatu. Fire, 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 fire. My job specification is a designer. I'd call it souping up cars or pimping up cars. Well, actually, I put design on cars, stickers, paint, pictures. It's a passion. As in, I enjoy creating something with my own hands. I like doing a job and standing aside and looking at it and saying, yeah, that's something beautiful. I like creating such things. And I also want to keep myself busy. It's quite challenging because somebody giving you the honors of designing their car, they're expecting a lot from you. So they're expecting that when you design this car and it goes out there, you must bring back money because they're using money to design it. And it's good for creating employment because now they do things like the installation, there are guys who do the graffiti. You see, like, that's art. And most, like, art doesn't pay in most of the places. But now, nowadays, if you do art on a matatu, you get, it's, you get money. The taxis decided to put screens, TVs, inside the, the, the taxis. The main thing was music. So we decided now, aha, this is a good opportunity to market ourselves in the matatu. Because by the end of the day, everyone has to board to come to town and go back home. So they get a chance to watch us more frequently. It's the music and the graffiti part of it. Yeah, I think uh, they're like one of the most beautiful things that you can have, especially now here in town. And especially on this route, let's say the Route 58. I don't think there's any other route that has anything on this route, yeah. When I talk about 58, I think of an area where people are into hip hop, people are into new things, what is currently happening. These are enlightened people. From the beginning, we record in the studio. We, we make the audio. Uh, then from there, we go make the video. And then come edit it in the studio. Then after that, we give it to a DJ who now mixes our music with other artists. Then out of the mix, that's what they go and sell to the matatus because they want the variety of artists, the variety of music. The government wants something in uniform. Like the white ones, everything has a yellow stripe. But they don't like graffiti. It's something we young people have found we can do instead of staying in the streets. So by killing, designing, they're killing a form of employment. So I'd say they give us a chance, see what we can do with it. There are some people who are raising families with what we are doing here. The government now is pushing us away from this thing. They are saying that maybe they are causing accidents, of which we don't understand how. I'm a driver. 
You, you yourself, you have the car, small car in front of me. You yourself, you want to go 20 speed, oh, you're creating more traffic behind me. I'm in a hurry because I'm carrying passengers. So I have to overlap, you have to go to my destination. Everywhere in every country, there are crazy drivers. But actually, here, here in Nairobi, I, I wouldn't say they're crazy. I'd say they're excited. So that's why they're basically driving the car like mad people. When I walk on the streets, I see a uh, matatu I have designed. I'm proud of it, man. I feel good when I'm walking on the streets and the drivers are like honking their horns at me. Yeah, Rasta, yeah, how you doing? I love art. That's what keeps me going. Music is part of our everyday life here in Kenya, as it is for the Portuguese, who are known for their father music. Think of it as equivalent to the blues. Some say that Fadu came as a dance from Africa in the 19th century and was adopted by the poor on the streets of Lisbon. Others say it started at sea as homesick sailors sang of their loneliness. But the most commonly accepted explanation is that it came from the songs of the Moors. I think that these whinings, these weepings, are related to the Moorish songs from the time when parts of Lisbon were under the domination of the Moors. At the beginning of the 19th century, it's when people started to sing it in the taverns and streets of the city, using the fado to express the pains of living under deep poverty. It's true that all these traditions had a great influence and contributed to the Fado appearance. But for me, these are just ingredients, because this style of music was cooked. I mean, it was born in Lisbon. This style of music was born here as an urban form of music. Fado music is the heart of the Portuguese soul. Literally, Fado means fate. But as with many other Portuguese words, it implies so much more. Cantar o Fado está ligado às emoções. Singing Fado is singing the human emotions, such as love, jealousy. Lyrics evoke longing, hopelessness and futility. Fado evokes saudade, a word that defies direct translation. Saudade implies longing and passion. Fado is sad in its essence. Fado music reflected the living conditions of the people who were living under a dictatorship at the time, and the soul of the people was very sad. Fado was also the earthy music of taverns, brothels and street corners. In these small bars and cafes, people would get up and sing in a spontaneous manner. One of the most famous names in Fado was Maria Severa. Maria Severo Nofriana is a mythical figure in the history of Fado. She lived between 1820 and 1846. She was a prostitute that became famous for a lovely voice and became the most famous Fado singer due to a forbidden love relation with the Count of Vimioso. Amalia Rodriguez is considered the queen of the Fadistas. Amalia. Amalia was the most important figure of the contemporary history of Fado music. She created a real revolution in Fado from an aesthetic point of view. Amalia helped take this music to a higher cultural level. It was also Amalia who introduced the tradition of dressing in black to sing Fado. Amalia took the Fado to a whole world. She opened the way that allowed others that some decades later spread the Fado around the world. More than a decade later, Carlos do Carmo did the same. But Fado had its critics. These lyrics were forbidden by the censorship commission during the fascist regime in Portugal. 
1927, with the implementation of censorship, Fado suffered a series of forced changes. Fado had nothing to do with the fascist regime. On the contrary, the leaders of the fascist regime had always tried to use the Fado because it was very popular. Fado didn't change with the regime because Fado comes from the soul. Today, the younger generation in Portugal is respectful but not dedicated to Fado. Marisa is a symbol of a new generation of Fadistas who are making Fado more international. Dressed in black, a Fadista stands in front of the musicians and communicates through gesture and facial expressions. The hands move, the body is stationary, eyes are closed. Fadishtas tell stories of pain and fatalism, longing or nostalgia, unrealized dreams. I'm here at the Maasai market where they sell beautiful pieces of artwork, but when we come back after the break, we're going to meet a man from Chicago who's given up pretty much everything for his art.